All right. Hello and welcome, everyone. Uh, I'm your host, Ali, CEO and co-founder of Node, the leading digital customer experience platform for chemicals and ingredients. Our goal with this series, as you know, is to share the perspectives you need to navigate the changing digital landscape of our industry. Um, we have another amazing guest with us today, uh, so why don't we just jump right into it. I'm thrilled to welcome Aldo Noceda, um, CIO of Eastman Chemical Company. Um, you guys all know Eastman, so I don't need to give too much context here, but um, for those that may not, uh, Eastman is a global specialty materials company that produces a broad range of products found in the items that we use every day. Um, they are committed to finding solutions um, to the world's leading challenges and improving the quality of life for consumers. I've gotten to know Aldo a little bit over the past uh, couple months. Um, I'm certain you guys will enjoy this brief chat. Um, he's someone that I can tell is you know, certainly committed to helping shape the, you know, the digital landscape of our industry. Aldo, thanks so much for making the time. Um, before we jump Pleasure in- Pleasure to be here. Yeah, awesome. Um, before we jump in, is there anything that you want to share about yourself or Eastman that I may have missed? Well, no, I think you share well um, things about Eastman. It $10 billion company, 14,000 employees. I would say um, the company has been very focused in the last you know, 10 years to try to develop what we call the specialty materials in the chemical sector business. Um, different from just call it the commodity chemicals that many companies sell. And um, in the last few years, we have also put a lot of attention in the area of circular economy and the idea to produce uh, products that have a recyclable content so for many companies talked about sustainability as, hey, it's important for us, it's important for the world. For us, the aspect of circular economy and sustainability, sustainability is a business by itself. And it's right now the biggest level of investment that we're doing as a company. So that is strategically where we position Eastman right now. I have certainly read some of these press releases and um, it's clear that Eastman has taken it very seriously. I mean, it's a real yeah, investment. Okay, um, let's jump right into our questions. We ask almost the same three questions of everyone. Um, these are the questions that our audience cares most about. Okay, so let's get into the first one. Um, even in this environment, we're seeing more and more suppliers increase investments in their digital capabilities, especially related to customer facing initiatives. Um, what's the biggest opportunity you see for Eastman when it comes to customer facing digital projects? Guests um, talk about all sorts of different investments they've made, anything ranging from digitizing product catalogs all the way to, you know, customer portals and e-commerce and all of all, all of those sort of things. So, but what opportunities do you see at Eastman? Yeah, so so maybe the, um, the best way to think about it is the way that we put our digital strategy many, many years ago, right? And we, we, we put a lot of of attention and focus of where we wanted to invest in the company. And we decided to, to put attention in three areas, right? The first one was uh, modernizing internally our landscape to better support our customers and our business. And that I would say stable stakes, many companies do it back and forth. And you just need to pick and choose where do you put your, your dollars and your attention. The second one is we put a big bet in the area of taking advantage of our data for decision-making from traditional visibility of information to more advanced analytics and mathematics in order to discover insights that uh, in normal way of doing business, you cannot see. And we put a, a lot of attention in the commercial organization as well as the R&D, again, to better help our customers. Second aspect. And the third one, which gets directly to your, to your question, having this specialty chemical business, it was important for us to find a way to further differentiate in the market and better connect to our customers. So we started to explore the idea, well, why can we complement this physical products that we sell with services and sell those services to the market? Um, and you, you know better than me, you know, services in today's world many times comes in the hand with digital. 
And we launch already four services to the market for digital products to the market. Two have been our flagships. One is called Core, where we provide services to the dealers that install, install pain protection films for the cars. And it's a subscription-based service. We have right now a very high net promoter score. We are netting composite in that and created a, an alternative revenue stream for the company on top of complementing our physical offering. And the second one is, is Fluid Genius, uh, which is a product that we sell to advise other manufacturings, our customers, in the use of thermal fluid through their plants. Again, you, you can search the, the products and see the details, but it's an example of how Eastman is getting closer to their customers and it starts to play in the services space. Um, I was familiar with the application performance films, not um, Fluid uh, Genius. So I'm gonna have to go check that out myself. Um, <laughs> it's amazing to see that you're um, not just creating digital products, but you're also able to monetize them. Um, that is very rare in our space. Yeah, it's very rare in the space. It's very rare in the chemical industry uh, as well. The, the story is the positioning of, of this specialty chemicals and the opportunity to differentiate and services. And it's also a lot of fun, right? Because then you start to generate, as I said, uh, independent revenue stream and a different thing and opportunities for the company and our customers. Yeah. Um, speaking of which, you know, lots of suppliers are referencing the expectations of their customers and how it's starting to change. Um, you know, they cite things in, um, with regards to like mostly responsiveness, that customers just want access to information, access to experts, you know, access to, you know, just answers as quickly as possible. Um, I assume that you've developed a couple of these products in response to that. Um, you know, I, I, you, know I, I, you, you are seeing expectations of your customers changing, I assume. Yeah, the, the products were more proactive. They were not uh, reactive to the situation of the markets. We thought carefully of what could generate value added opportunities and then go after this. And then, as I said, it started to develop a service category uh, for the company and for our customers. More in the response aspect of what's going on today, the big area of attention is getting really good at planning. You know, planning from, you know, the way we sense demand in the market, especially we were, you know, talking, I remember in the past about, you know, the stocking and stocking of the market. How do you, can you read the market to better decide what is going to be the real demand? And from that, correctly plan your production, correctly plan your supply, and be able to have that agility to respond to the situations of the market. I think that's, one of the important names of the game right now, and one that we're putting a lot, a lot of attention. Ali. Yeah, I makes total sense, especially in this environment. Um, so, 2023 is not like 2021. <laughs> um, yeah, there, there are certainly some headwinds right now. Um, what advice would you give industry leaders as they're attempting to balance these short-term challenges against, you know, long-term investments, especially in 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 your CIO office? Yeah, I, I always try to have a positive uh, approach to this kind of things. But um, first of all, I know that there's a lot of, of terminology between information technology and digital, and we use them indistinctively. For me, there are synonyms, right? So we, we provide digital or information technology capabilities to, at the end of the day, make our business better. I think the, the primary element is, um, is focus on the value aspect. If you focus on the value creation, cost becomes an equation of it. So what do I mean by that? If you have something that is gonna generate you 10 and it costs one, really the, the limitations of the environment are less relevant. Actually, it's an opportunity for that. I think that, in some cases, I've seen IT organization primarily focus on how do we get the cost right and the cost conversation. And I believe the name of the game is to focus on the value. The second um, 
topic is short iterations, right? So when you have multi-year programs, not always easy to, to reduce, but multi-year programs where you only achieve the value at the end of the cycle, it's, it's, it's complicated because then you're getting into big investments until you see the return. But if you're able to, what is the phrase, eat the elephant in pieces, right? In a, and you can structure that, then short iterations with a focus on value, many times, not always, uh, unlock uh, opportunities, even in challenging times. Those would be humbly my, my two advices that I would give others. And ones that are not always working, but many times they do. Um, I'm curious to get your thoughts on that first piece there a little bit more. So, you know, projects that are related to cost cutting in our industry typically get funded just because it's so tangible and, um, you know, you can see a short term sort of return. The ones related to value usually take longer and require folks to be, um, you know, willing to take more risk. How do you balance those two? I mean, it's, uh, you know, certain folks just want to see certain types of projects um, and yeah. they have a hard time. Yeah. Yeah. Let me clarify that a little bit. So I think having an, an initiative, you know, in the digital space that creates a cost savings opportunity or an initiative in the digital space that creates a top line opportunity or a value top line opportunity, both create value and both have sometimes a necessary level of investment. Mm -hmm. The issue is not working in cost saving scenarios or working in value added scenarios. The issue for me is when you, you put extra attention of how much that investment is gonna cost me versus the value that it's gonna create. And the value could be cost savings for the organization or top line value. That's a, a, a different problem. And uh, uh, I think the more we focus in, at the end of the day, the outcome of the initiative, the cost of the initiative, it has, if it has a good return, especially if it's short term, uh, I think it's easier to sell and to and to get the priority uh, if it's a good thing for the company. Yeah, makes total sense. Um, I'll, I appreciate all the insights you shared today, as uh, I'm sure the audience does. Everyone loves these short, informal conversations with folks like yourself to help shape the space. Thank you for everything that you do. I'm looking forward to hearing what Eastman does next and uh, where you take the innovation of digital next. Thank you so much, Aldo, for the time. Ali, thank you very much for inviting me. And I love doing this whenever you need. Again, just let me know. Love it. Thank you. Take care.